Mr. Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to request you to declare the 25th annual convocation of the Goa University open. This 25th annual convocation of the Goa University has been called to confer degrees, diplomas upon the candidates who in the examinations held for the purpose have been successful and certified to be worthy of receiving the degrees, diplomas. Let the candidates be presented. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of MA and BA under the Faculty of Languages and Literature. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of MA and BA under the Faculty of Languages and Literature of this university and in token thereof, they have been awarded with the degrees. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidate whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of BFA, BPA, and MPA under the Faculty of Performing Fine Art and Music. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of BFA and BPA and MPA under the Faculty of Performing, Fine Art and Music of this University and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of ME, BA, BSW and postgraduate diplomas in guidance and counseling and geoinformatics under the Faculty of Social Sciences. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees or diplomas to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of MA, BA, BSW and postgraduate diplomas in guidance and counseling and geoinformatics under the Faculty of Social Sciences of this University and in token thereof, they have been awarded with the degrees or diplomas. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of MSc, MCA, BSc, and Postgraduate Diploma in Computer Applications under the Faculty of Natural Sciences. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees diplomas to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of MSc, MCA, BSc, and Postgraduate Diploma in Computer Applications under the Faculty of Natural Sciences of this university, and in token thereof, they have been awarded with the degrees or diplomas. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of MCH, MD, MS, MBBS, MDS, BDS, MPharm, BPharm, BAMS, BHMS, BSc in Nursing, and PG Medical Diplomas under the Faculty of Medicine. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees, diplomas, to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of MCH, MD, MS, 
एम बी बी एस एम डी एस बी डी एस एम फार्म बी फार्म बी एम एस बी एच एम एस बी एस सी इन नर्सिंग एंड पी जी मेडिकल डिप्लोमाज अंडर द फैकल्टी ऑफ मेडिसिन ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इन टोकन देर ऑफ दे हैव बीन अवॉर्डेड विद द डिग्रीज ऑफ डिप्लोमाज Mr Chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degree of ME and BE under the faculty of engineering they have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of ME and BE under the faculty of engineering of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with their degrees Mr Chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of LLM LLB degree LLB honors BGL and diploma in labor law and labor welfare under the faculty of law they have been examined and found qualified for the respective degree diplomas to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of llm llb degree llb honors bgi and diploma in labor law and labor welfare under the faculty of law of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees and diplomas mr chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of msc bsc and post graduate diploma in clinical genetics and medical laboratory techniques under the faculty of life science and environment they have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees diploma to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of msc bsc and post graduate diploma in clinical genetics and medical laboratory techniques under the faculty of life sciences and environment of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees or diplomas Mr Chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of mcom mba financial services bcom bca and bfs under the faculty of commerce they have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of mcom mba financial services bcom bca and bfs under the faculty of commerce of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees mr chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of mba bba bttm and postgraduate diplomas under the faculty of management studies they have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees diplomas to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of mba bba bttm and postgraduate diplomas under the faculty of management sciences management studies of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees diplomas mr chancellor sir i present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degree of bac under the faculty of design they have been examined and found qualified for the degree to which i pray they may be admitted by virtue of the authority vested in me as the chancellor of the goa university i admit all the candidates presented to the degree of bac under the faculty of design of this university and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degree 
Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates whose names are set out in the list for the degrees of B.Ed., B.Ed. Special and B.P.Ed. under the Faculty of Education. They have been examined and found qualified for the respective degrees to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of the Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degrees of B.Ed., B.Ed. Special and B.P.Ed under the Faculty of Education of this University and in token thereof they have been awarded with the degrees. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have qualified themselves for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in their respective subjects. They be awarded the said degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Languages and Literature of this university and in token thereof, they have been conferred the degree. Prakash Naik, PhD in Konkani. Rajay R. Pawar, PhD in Konkani. Mr. Chancellor, sir. I present to you the following candidates who have qualified themselves for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in their respective subjects. They be awarded the said degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Social Sciences of this university and in token thereof, they have been conferred the degree. Shilpa R. Samant, Ph.D. in Economics. Sushila Savant Mendes, Ph.D. in History. Padmaja Vijay Kamath, Ph.D. in History. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have qualified themselves for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in their respective subjects. They be awarded the said degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Natural Sciences of this university and in token thereof, they have been conferred the degrees. Girish V. S. Kundaikar, PhD in Physics. Sonia G. Naik, PhD in Chemistry. Rajesh R. Parvatkar, PhD in Chemistry. Lactina Regina Gonsalves, PhD in Chemistry. Puzi Atmaram Pavaskar, PhD in Chemistry. Rajeshri Karmali, PhD in Chemistry. Divya Sridhar, PhD in Chemistry. Manoj Madhu Ibrampurkar, PhD in Earth Science. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have qualified themselves for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the respective subjects, they be awarded the said degree. 
By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Life Sciences and Environment of this university, and in token thereof, yes. they have been conferred the degree. Ashish Prabhugaonkar, PhD in Botany. M. Baskaran, PhD in Botany. Jyoti Vaingankar, PhD in Botany. Any D'Souza, PhD in Botany. Suman Gard, PhD in Zoology. Milind Mohan Naik, PhD in Microbiology. Lakshangi Chari, PhD in Microbiology. Trelita D'Souza, PhD in Microbiology. Sweta Naik, PhD in Microbiology. Delicta Kolayako, PhD in Microbiology. Sijin Kumar, PhD in Marine Science. Lazu Michael, PhD in Marine Science. Nutan Sangekar, PhD in Marine Science. Maria Shamina De Silva, PhD in Marine Science. Sagar Naik, PhD in Marine Science. Vinish TC, PhD in Marine Science. Lena L. Fernandez, PhD in Marine Science. Nisha Kurian, PhD in Marine Science. Niyati Kalangutkar, PhD in Marine Science. Rashmi Vinayak, PhD in Marine Science. Sudhir Kumar, PhD in Biotechnology. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have qualified themselves for the award of degree of Doctor of Philosophy in their respective subjects. They be awarded the said degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit all the candidates presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Commerce of this university, and in token thereof, they have been conferred the degree. Subhash Naik, PhD in Commerce. Sanjay P. Savan Desai, PhD in Commerce. Nilesh Anil Bode, PhD in Commerce. Nalini Koturi, PhD in Commerce. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidate who has qualified herself for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the subject of management. She be awarded the said degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the Chancellor of Goa University, I admit the candidate presented to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy under the Faculty of Management Studies of this university, and in token thereof, she has been conferred the degree. 
Indira K. Sridharan, PhD in Management Studies. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Languages and Literature. They be awarded the said prizes or medals. But Akshata Ashok, Department of English. <laughs> Parabas Neha Chandrasen, Department of Hindi. Rodriguez Roman, Department of Konkani. Sadekar Snehal Bhagwan, Department of Marathi. Zuzarte Grisel Osorina, Department of French. Fernandes Maria Helena Clotildich, Department of Portuguese. Gomis do Rosario Sonia, Department of Portuguese. Gavankar Palia Tukaram, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Kanembekar Supriya Shivaji, Yamias College of Arts and Commerce, Zuarinagar. Patil Maya Rama, Saint Xavier's College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Mapusa. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Social Sciences. They be awarded the said prizes or medals. Bele Hale Sefa, Department of Economics. Fernandes Susan Servulo, Department of Sociology. Sinai Garse Manisha Vinay, Department of History. Shete Purna Achut, Department of History. Sheikh Nimbal Faryana Maulali, Department of Philosophy. Pires Desiri, Department of Political Science. Niyas Abdullah, Center for Latin American Studies. Savlekar Teja Ashok, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Fernandes Yelita Velika, Carmel College of Arts, Science and Commerce for Women, Nuem. Disosa Shreya Natalia, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Dias Antia, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Gaons Yogita Mukund, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned their respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Natural Sciences. They be awarded the said prizes or medals. Naik Gaunikar Dakshata Dataram, Department of Chemistry. Estiberio Brem, Department of Chemistry. Narvikar Apurva Anand, St. Xavier's College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Mapsa. <coughs> Bandaru Shruti, Department of Earth Science. Lobo Zervin Zen, Department of Maths. Yadavadi Rohini Sadashiv, Department of Physics. Tavares Noel Gervasio, Department of Electronics.
Menezes Warren Victor, Department of Computer Science. Nagvenkar Anjani Pandurang, Government College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Kepeng. Rao Rashmi Ananta Krishna, Srimati Parvati Bhai Chogle, College of Arts and Science, Margaon. Pereira Placida Predringa, Kamal College of Arts, Science and Commerce for Women, Nuve. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Medicine. They be awarded the said prizes or the medals. Nivedita Dattara Mitta of Goa Medical College. A. Santosh Kumar of Goa Medical College. Hegde Punam Parameshwara of Goa Medical College. Shivani Saini of Goa Medical College. Valvaikar Akshaya Ratnakar of Goa Medical College. Mysore Ashwin Ragunandan of Goa Dental College. Rodericks Adlin of Goa Dental College. Mashilkar Krutika Hemant of Goa Dental College. Kelkar Sayali Sriram of Gomantak Ayurvedic Mahavidyalaya and Research Center. Gaukar Sujal Suryakant of Sri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College, Shiroda. Yam Firoz Nisha of Sri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College. De Silva Dinosha Vini of Sri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College. Rodericks Dennis David of Sri Kamakshi Devi. Homeopathic Medical College. Naik Shirodkar Tanvi, Ashok Sri Kamakshi Devi, Homeopathic Medical College. Desai Rucha Ramesh of Goa College of Pharmacy. Lotlikar Rima Durgadas of PES College Pharmacy. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned their respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Engineering. They be awarded the set prizes or medal. Kadam Vandita Ullas, Goa College of Engineering. Sholanki Jaipal Singh Shwarwansi, Goa College of Engineering. Shenvi Varde Diksha Dattaram, Goa College of Engineering. Shaivaikar Madhav Govin, Goa College of Engineering. Shetty Vaibhai Karnwakar, Goa College of Engineering. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Law. They be awarded the said awards, prizes, or medals. Audi Shanur, Elias Jagdish Pandurang, GR Kari College of Law, Margaon. Priyanka Srivastav, VM Salgaonkar College of Law, Miramar Panji. Oi Natasha Elias Panchubai Mukun, 
पी एम सलगांवकर कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ डिसाउजा क्रिस्टाबेला साविया वी एम सलगांवकर कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ मेरा Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Life Science and Environment. They be awarded the said prizes or medals. Disuza Rosie Agnes, Department of Botany. Potato Swizzle Rita, Department of Zoology. Sharma Jaya, Department of Microbiology. Nasrin B. Chaudhary, Department of Biotechnology. Avirup Sain, Department of Marine Science. Kerkar Anvita Ullas, Dempe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidates who have earned the respective awards by obtaining highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Commerce. They be awarded the said prizes or medals. Nelly Rosa Rosario de Silva, Department of Commerce. Kolamkar Prachi Premanan, Department of Commerce. Kamath Tanvi Avdud, SS Dempo College of Commerce and Economics, Panji. Vaz Nina Karla, MES College of Arts and Commerce, Zwarinaga. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I present to you the following candidate who has earned the respective awards by obtaining the highest marks in the concerned subjects under the Faculty of Management. He be awarded the said prizes or medals. Khwaja Mohammad Azhar, Department of Management Studies. His Excellency, Sri Bharatwil Wanchu, the Governor of Goa and the Chancellor of Goa University, Professor Govardhan Mehta, National Research Professor, Professor Vijendra Kamath, Registrar of Goa University, members of university bodies, deans of faculties, principals, heads of departments, members of faculties from the main campus and from the colleges affiliated to the university, distinguished guests, members of the staff of the university, students, recipients of degrees, winners of medals and prizes, proud parents, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this annual convocation of Goa University, which is being held for the 25th time in the history of the university. While this is a landmark by its own right, years 2012 and 2013 have another landmark, completion of 50 years of university education in the state of Goa. Higher education in Goa began with starting of two colleges, Srimati Parvati Bai Chogule College of Arts and Science at Madgaon and Dempe College of Arts and Science at Panji in 1962. In 1963, St. Xavier's College of Arts and Science started at Vastoda near Mapsa. It is apt that we begin this convocation ceremony 
by remembering the contributions of the founding fathers of these three colleges and by paying our tributes to the organizations that have ensured sustained progress of these institutions through five decades. Paying this tribute is a special privilege to me personally because like many here today, I am a beneficiary of the leap that Goa made in higher education with these three colleges. What started in 1962 has today grown into a system that has, besides the main campus here, over 55 affiliated colleges in general and professional education. Well over 26,000 students study in this system towards that undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctoral degrees. This convocation ceremony marks conferment of degrees on 7,161 graduates, 956 postgraduate, 141 postgraduate diploma holders, and 39 doctors of philosophy. Altogether, 8,295 become recognized today as degree and postgraduate diploma holders of Goa University. My congratulations to all those who are receiving their hard-earned recognition today. You make your university proud. It gives me great pleasure to note that amongst the graduates are 48 prize winners and 56 medal winners. These prizes and medals have been awarded to them in recognition of their excellence. My special congratulations to them. I also congratulate the parents and families of the graduates who ensured the dawning <coughs> of this day for their wards. This country is proud of the efforts, sacrifices, devotion, sometimes obsession, of families that ensure that their next generation is significantly better educated than the present generation. The country truly believes that it is this devotion that will bring a better future for the country. As the only university of the state, we have to give concrete shape to aspirations of the citizens of the state to create a more learned citizenry in the future, a citizenry that will be better placed to tap the demographic advantages that India has in a globalized world. This is the charge given by the state to this university. The charge implies that the university needs to evolve its strategies, keeping in mind the bulk of the bell curve that represents the community of students of the state. The challenge is to convert this community into competent and confident professionals, be they employees, self-employed, or entrepreneurs. Close to 7,000 graduates who are getting their first degree today imply that the state has done well, very well in fact, in terms of enrollment in higher education when compared with other states and union territories. Our challenge now is twofold. First, can we keep up with the expected increase in numbers in the future? Second, can we keep improving the quality of education so as to give our graduates higher confidence to face the world? Going by the present trend in increase of enrollment per year in the state, and noting that the country is getting ready for a major initiative to spread higher education in the country, we need to be prepared to absorb about 1,000 students in the undergraduate program of the university every year during the next decade. Most of them will enroll in our affiliated colleges. I feel fairly confident that our system of colleges 
is capable of absorbing this increase. I am also confident that the main campus has the resources to cope up with the expected increase in the number of postgraduates. The bigger challenge is ensuring a sustained improvement in quality of education. There are no proven prescriptions on how to achieve this goal. We will need to explore ways and means on how to move ahead. The annual convocation is the largest and most important gathering of those intimately associated with the well-being of the university. On this occasion, I would like to share with you some thoughts that I believe need serious consideration. First, we need to improve awareness for quality in higher education system. An efficient way to achieve this goal is to expose our units, the main campus and the affiliated colleges, to exercises that go with the process of accreditation. Some of our colleges have done well in this regard, but we need more colleges to participate in the process. This is the only way to benchmark ourselves with others and appreciate where we stand in a competitive, globalized world. We must also encourage our students to participate in national and international competitive exams to benchmark the performance of our students with those from the rest of the country and the world. Second, we need to encourage our colleges to attain academic autonomy, particularly those that have not only survived but thrived over the last few decades. Education is a dynamic process. It flourishes with freedom for teachers to explore new ways of teaching and for students to experiment with new ways of learning. This much desired environment of exploration and experimentation needs academic autonomy. The state government, the university, and each college must work together to explore ways to make academic autonomy for a college possible. Third, we need a far greater emphasis on research in postgraduate programs of the university. This is particularly so for the main campus, which forms the hub of postgraduate and doctoral research, and hence an important provider of future faculty for affiliated colleges. It is important to realize that the experience gained through active research provides the teacher and the student insights that are critical to sustain excellence in teaching and in learning. Choice before a faculty member is not between being a researcher or a teacher. The way ahead is to be a researcher teacher to take our system to a higher level of performance. Fourth, as the state's only university, we need to evolve far greater interaction with the cultural, literary, scientific, industrial, and other domains of the state. Our students, particularly the postgraduate and doctoral students, must be encouraged to pick research problems that are intimately associated with the problems that the state faces. This research must then lead to choice in policy for the state. Goa University, with its relatively small size, has a distinct advantage to evolve an intimate relationship with the intellectual life of this small state. This advantage must be exploited. It was with much enthusiasm some years ago that the university made it mandatory in most of its undergraduate programs, completion of a project, a small research problem. We must revitalize this initiative. It gives our students an opportunity to take up issues that concern our immediate surroundings. We must inculcate in them an ability to explore these surroundings on their own and thereby learn how to think from first principles. Fifth, 
a new revolution in learning is taking shape with new technologies. Course content generated within the country and outside is becoming freely available via the internet. Goa has a well-developed telecommunication infrastructure. This needs to be used to bring new ways of course content delivery to our students distributed across the state. Sixth, and the most difficult to implement of the suggestions made here is that we need to have a system that quantifies the performance of the university system, efficiency of our teaching, effectiveness of our programs, costs per student, et cetera, et cetera. One such performance indicator is employability of our graduates from different programs offered by the university. The absence of a database that records performance of a program hinders the process of evaluating the program to determine how it needs to evolve with time. Only when we define a measurable element of a system, its monitoring becomes possible. And monitoring is necessary to make the planning process realistic. Consider, for example, two questions that we have often asked ourselves in the past. Should we provide add-on courses to make our graduates more employable? Should we tie up with an industrial organization to define our education programs so as to make our graduates desirable to that industry? Today, we address these questions primarily by invoking our instincts. This must change. We need a more quantitative tool to plan for the future. In essence, we look back with satisfaction the evolution of higher education system in the post-liberation Goa. Perhaps we could claim that ours is one of the most accessible and inclusive higher education system in the country. During the next decade, we need to focus on attaining a quantum jump in quality of education. We need an action plan to give Goa a university that it cherishes. Before concluding, I express my gratitude to His Excellency, Sri Bharatvir Wancho, the Governor of Goa and the Chancellor of Goa University for presiding over this convocation ceremony. I am grateful to Professor Govardhan Mehta, National Research Professor, for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest today. I thank you all for your attention and wish all the best to our graduates as they prepare themselves to face the world. I now request the chief guest, Professor Govardhan Mehta, to deliver the convocation address. Chancellor of the University and Governor of Goa, Sri Bharatvir Wanchu, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Shetye, Registrar, Professor Kamat, esteemed members of the university's Executive Council and other university authorities, distinguished faculty, Dear graduating students, proud parents and relatives, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be part of your 25th convocation and appreciate the opportunity to share a few thoughts with you this morning. Let me at the very outset offer my heartiest congratulations and very best wishes to the graduating students and the medal and prize winners who have studied diligently and succeeded. As you surge ahead in life, I exhort you to excel in all your future endeavors to fully realize your potential and aspirations and serve the country and humanity. But be reminded that education does not end with a degree. Fashion yourself to be lifelong learners. Follow the learning, unlearning, relearning paradigm to compose the book of your life. 
I am very pleased to know about the many achievements of your university and the strides you have made in diverse areas of teaching and research. Your ambition should be to propel Goa University among the top institutions, both nationally and internationally. I am confident that with a distinguished scientist like Dr. Chetier at the helm, you will be able to define a new trajectory. Some of the thoughts that he shared about the university with focus on quality and research augurs well for the future of this university. I would like to wish the entire university fraternity ascendancy through reforms in teaching, learning processes, and innovation in research in years ahead. My young friends, this is your day as you have reached a major milestone in your career progression and you would like to celebrate the occasion with your family and friends. And so let me assure you that my engagement with you will be brief. Quite unlike the instinct of an academic to speak freely and unfettered, I have chosen to read out a written text mainly to ensure that I know when to finish, and more importantly, I am able to convey only things that I mean to say and not which I say by default. I propose to dwell on a few issues which I hope will help calibrate your mindset with respect to the challenges that await you in future life and stimulate some internal churning among the academic community present here. I want to begin by highlighting the advantage that India has in the 21st century, mainly on our 3D strengths, which are often talked about, the strengths of democracy, diversity, and demography. India, as you know, is a remarkably young country with 54% of the population below the age of 30, and the median age is around 25 years. This makes us almost a generation younger than the countries with which we have to compete in the 21st century. And the resulting demographic dividend in the form of renewable human resources is our great asset. Given our multi-religious, multilingual, and multicultural population, we are truly a rainbow nation, an expression famously used by Reverend Desmond Tutu to describe post-apartheid South Africa. Despite such breathtaking human, geographic, and cultural diversity, we as a nation of 1.2 billion people have an enviable record of living in peace and harmony under a democratic polity. Clearly, India is a powerhouse of young, talented human resources nurtured in a free, accommodative, and inclusive environment. Thus, in a rapidly globalizing, knowledge and technology-driven world, our young generation has myriad opportunities waiting. Learn to recognize these opportunities, grab, grab them, and ascend to the very top. In order to harness and fully benefit from our 3D advantage, the existing socioeconomic and educational divide in our midst and often referred to as the gulf between India and Bharat, will have to be bridged effectively and expeditiously. It is my firm belief, reinforced by several recent happenings, where societal concerns, passion for a cause, and resolve to invent a new mindset were on display, that your generation has the sensitivity, ability, and capacity to drive our destiny towards a just and sustainable future. Fashion your thoughts and actions to achieve this objective. The second point I wish to make is to nudge you to dream big and to learn to challenge the impossible. In the dynamic world of 21st century, time domains and geographies are rapidly shrinking, but knowledge and innovation spaces are expanding and competition is at the vanguard. In such a scenario, 
of competitive world, good is not good enough. Let me repeat, good is not good enough. Even better is not enough. Only better than the best will make the grade. Thus, as you surf the limitless horizon of possibilities, set ambitious goals and aim for the impossible. Mark Twain said a century ago, and I quote, they did not know it was impossible, so they did it. Today, myriad innovative possibilities fundamentally challenge the dogma of impossibility. All historical experience confirms the truth that man would not have attained the possible unless time and again he has reached for the impossible. So remember, nothing is beyond possibility. My young friends, dream big. Remember the common saying that one who has not dreamt never did anything worthwhile in life. And to realize your dreams, invent your own unique sense of purposefulness that is a blend of your ambition, passion, and creativity. But as you traverse the path to success, never deviate from the core values of tolerance, non-violence, and pluralism. Be ever mindful that our common future is interwoven in the ideals of shared Indianness, transparency, and integrity in all aspects of life. The third point I want to make is about urgent need in our higher education system to establish synergy between learning and skills. Our poet laureate, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, said, and I quote, the highest education is that which does not merely give us information, but makes our life in harmony with all existence, which makes our life in harmony with all existence. Another worthy expressed it differently, but as emphatically, and I quote, an educational system isn't worth a great deal if it teaches young people how to make a living, but does not teach them how to make a life. This means that education, particularly at university level, should facilitate a holistic understanding of the milieu in which one leaves, one lives, grows, discovers purpose, and of course, carve out a successful career in an increasingly seamless world. To help realize such an ambition, a paradigm shift in our offerings, particularly at undergraduate level, to harmonize hard learning with soft skills is fundamentally important. A national aspiration that every graduate, whether in a general purpose course or in a professional course, should not only have disciplinary knowledge, but also be armed with a set of core competencies and switchable skills is absolutely necessary for successful careers in the 21st century. Thus, an objective shift in educational training, particularly at first degree level, from training for one or no career for life to training for lifetime of careers is essential. It should equip, challenge, and motivate the students to strive to excel beyond their own expectations. I wish to make a strong plea for making a paradigm shift and recrafting of our undergraduate programs leading to the BCom, BA, and BSc degrees in particular. This stream produces nearly four million graduates every year and is the mainstay of our higher education system. While numbers do sound impressive, there is increasing concern that our graduates are largely unemployable and do not possess either the disciplinary depth or the skills needed for the competitive and innovation-driven world. Only day before uh, yesterday, ASOCAM released a study about MBAs. Only 10% of MBAs, other than, of course, those graduating from some of our very prestigious institutions, are considered employable. NASCOM FICI study a few years showed that less than 20% of our engineering graduates are employable. 
So this mismatch between what is needed and what is offered and the resultant ability and the skill gap is being increasingly felt. This should serve as a wake-up call for our institutions to reinvent and recraft their academic offerings. The need, therefore, is to reconfigure the predominantly disciplinary and learning-centric offerings by striking a proper balance between didactic training and the skills to prepare for a world of opportunities. I think when we craft our programs, we must keep in mind that other than imparting disciplinary knowledge and depth, it is very important that we prepare the young minds for the opportunities which await them. The learning segment can be redesigned not only in terms of time frames, course loads, and disciplinary depth, but should be inherently flexible and contextual and an enabler of learning across disciplines. The skill portfolio should comprise the skills in numeracy, which means everyone should be equipped to think quantitatively, analytically, which actually sums up to, to acquiring the ability for strategic thinking. Language, communication, and networking, managing human relationships, accessing and managing information, the art of data mining, for example, and imbibing the spirit of competitiveness and innovation, which is the out-of-the-box view of things. Every student who graduates must be armed with these absolutely essential skills. These attributes of core skills, essential for employment, entrepreneurship, good citizenry, knowledge and wealth creation, are not to be viewed as contradictory, but are inherently complementary in the pursuit of learning for scholarship, disciplinary expertise, and intellectual enrichment. Such changes in the undergraduate programs are completely within the ambit of the universities, and one hopes that some of our institutions will be bold enough to dare. The fourth point I wish to make is promote the ambition to become entrepreneurs and innovators. As stakeholders in building a great future for our country, our universities must promote a national appreciation for innovation, entrepreneurship, and creative processes among our aspirational generation. We live in an era dominated by innovations, and as Bill Gates aptly put it, and I quote, never before in history has innovation offered promise of so much to so many in such a short time. Innovations are driven by entrepreneurial fervor and are not necessarily the preserve of only scientists and technologists, although they may have better avenues. Innovation is an arena open to all those who can think differently. As someone said, innovation and creativity is about inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. Cultivate the habit of thinking out of the box about things around you to find new solutions to problems or create new or improved products or float new ideas to address either country-specific or global-level challenges. Steve Jobs, a great inventor, had famously said, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Aspire to be leaders, not followers. Be employers and not employees. And be wealth creators and not mere consumers. Remember, everyone has the potential to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is expanding beyond the business entrepreneurship today to include social entrepreneurship, ecological entrepreneurship, and even educational entrepreneurship. And thus, a new, whole new world of opportunities is unleashing in the entrepreneurship arena. As you embark on such a journey, never be afraid of risks, never be deterred by failures and turn every obstacle into an opportunity. Distinguished Indian physicist of pre-independent era, Professor Meghnath Saha, put it very aptly, 
and I quote, if there has been any success in my life that was built on the unshakable foundation of failure. My young friends always remember the saying, a person who never failed, never tried anything new. The last point I wish to make, which in some ways echoes what Dr. Chetier also has emphasized, and that is about restoring the primacy of research in the universities and the commitment of higher education institutions to reform and rejuvenation processes. I would like to say a few words about bringing back the research culture in the universities. Research and teaching are inseparable and intimately conjoined. For an academic, teaching is sheer joy and brings satisfaction, but research is an elixir that fuels creative energy and instincts that enriches the intellectual life of a university in a way nothing else can. Until a few decades ago, our universities had a very enviable record of research output, but regrettably, that tradition seems to have lost its sheen. This anomaly needs immediate correction through restoration of research culture within the universities. We, as universities and academic institutions, must value, recognize, and put a premium on knowledge generation processes. The lofty and inspiring tradition of teacher-researcher which at one time flourished in our academic landscape, needs to be rediscovered. As partners and beacons in building a great future for our country, our universities must be the torch bearers for restoring the primacy of education and learning processes in the cherished values and priorities of our society. To achieve this, our universities need to rediscover the tradition of autonomy, independence, commitment, and accountability. In my considered view, commitment to integrity, sense of fairness and objectivity, and upholding of academic values are the best insulation against any extraneous meddling in the affairs of the university. Teachers and administrators within the academic fraternity should not only educate, nurture, and enthuse the young generation, but also lead by example. Preparing enlightened citizens for tomorrow and nurturing a society that values scholarship, discovery, and creative endeavors is an integral responsibility of the universities and educational institutions. Universities must ascend in public esteem to occupy the hallowed space that befits them. Being in the academic arena for a long time, I do realize that the ground realities are sometimes awesome and frustrating. But it is no use sheltering behind the often rep repeated argument that universities only mirror the happenings in the rest of the society. Why can't universities be the agents of change? Why not inculcate the spirit of inquiry and creativity among the students and provide an ambience where not only scholarship can flourish and academicians can freely glimpse the world of seamless knowledge, but they are also inspired to become agents of social change. Finally, my dear graduating students, I implore you to set new benchmarks in scholarship, values, and service to the nation and humanities. I thank you all for your patience and thank the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, for giving me this opportunity to be with you on your Silver Jubilee convocation. Thank you and Jai Hind. I now request His Excellency, the Governor of Goa, and Chancellor of Goa University to deliver his presidential address. Professor Govardhan Mehta, Natural Research Professor, University of Hyderabad, Dr. Satish Shetier, Vice Chancellor of Goa University, Dr. V.P. Kamath, Registrar of Goa University, 
members of the court, executive council, academic council, and other bodies of the university, deans of faculties, principals of colleges, heads of departments, members of faculties, recipients of degrees, award winners, respected citizens of Goa, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you on the campus of Goa University for its 25th convocation. This is a very special and important day for the students who are being conferred with degrees. Let me first and foremost congratulate the graduates who have received their degrees and particularly the prize winners who have been recognized for their pursuit of excellence. This day is a milestone in your life that you graduates will remember for a long time as the day when society put its stamp of approval and recognized your achievements and the zeal with which you pursued your goals. This is an experience that enriches all, an experience that I wish and pray should come in the life of each and every youth of this country. We are indeed very happy to have Professor Govardhan Mehta, National Research Professor, with us today and feel honored that he has made it convenient to attend the convocation and deliver the convocation address. Professor Govardhan Mehta needs no introduction. He is a leading researcher in the area of chemical sciences who has made notable and outstanding contributions in chemical sciences and specializes in the area of organic chemistry. He has also made notable contributions to science education, science policy and planning and R&D efforts in India and abroad. He is known as an institution builder and a promoter of innovations in higher education and research. He has held various visiting chairs in several countries abroad and served on the editorial boards of over a dozen leading international journals in chemistry. Professor Govardhan Mehta is presently National Research Professor, University of Hyderabad. He has held high positions such as President of the International Council of Science, Director of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and President of University of Hyderabad. It is our privilege to have such an eminent personality with us for the convocation. I extend to him a warm welcome to our beautiful state and to Goa University. Friends, India decided two decades ago to pursue a path of development based on globalization, thereby opening new opportunities for its youth. India's current demographic profile is such that 50% of our population is almost below the age of 25 years. This in simple term means that we have the manpower of the right age to serve or service the world. Our policy of globalization, coupled with our demographic profile, have today created for us an opportunity of unparalleled proportions. If we seize this opportunity, which we must, India will provide a sizable fraction of the services and products needed by the world in the decades ahead. This is a huge opportunity that has come our way, and we can utilize it provided we are prepared for it. If we do not use this opportunity, which I dare say is God sent, we will miss the bus and get left behind. One of the most important elements in our being prepared to avail this opportunity is the level of higher education with which we will equip our younger generation. Of concern here is both the quantity and quality of higher education that we will be in a position to provide to our youth. To meet the requirements of quantity, we need a higher proportion of our population to go through the higher education stream. To meet the requirements of quality, 
we need to ensure that our graduates get the best education so that they are able to compete with graduates from anywhere in the world. The state of Goa is small and it is our good fortune that in terms of per capita income distribution in the country, we are virtually at the top. The state is also doing quite well with regard to enrollment in the education sector. It is indeed a matter of great satisfaction that every child born in Goa goes to school. Our gross enrollment ratio, often called by its acronym GER, a measure of percentage of population that enters degree and diploma colleges programs is 28.3%. This percentage is the fourth highest in the country. It is, however, a matter of concern that at the end of the 11th plan, the national average of our GER was only 15%, though the target to be achieved by the end of the 12th plan is 30%. While Goa is already close to achieving this goal, we need to do a lot more in the rest of the country to reach that target. Goa's achievement has been possible only because of the active and sustained support of the state government ever since Goa attained its independence in 1961. I expect that such support will continue in the years ahead, ensuring that the state continues to march ahead in the field of higher education. Goa University is a university that truly embraces the state of Goa. It's over 50 affiliated colleges that cover both general education and professional programs are spread across the length and breadth of the state. Over 95% of the 26,000 students of this university study in these colleges that are run with the support of the government largely through a participatory mechanism that involves educational trusts run by the state's philanthropists, Jesuit educational organizations, and educations run courtesy, the generosity from many in society. It is this participatory exercise that has helped the state to achieve the high level of GER that it has. On this occasion, I must place on record my appreciation for this exemplary achievement of the state. Education here is truly broad-based and receives support right from the grassroots level. I sincerely hope the growth in GER witnessed in the past will continue in the years ahead. With the state's achievement in being on the right track of inclusive growth in the education sector, it is now necessary to pay greater attention to the quality of education. This, according to me, is indeed a matter of concern and a major challenge. The country as a whole is going through an acute shortage of trained manpower to cater to the needs of the higher education sector. Our resources are limited. How then do we achieve higher levels of quality? There are no simple answers, nor are the solutions easy. We need to create conditions that will attract the talent that we need. This will require putting together systems that recognize merit. A meritorious teacher, we must remember, has the potential to create thousands of meritorious citizens during his or her lifetime. It is this potential that we need to tap. I firmly believe that in education, there is no alternative to merit and to the path of excellence, and there can and should be no compromise on this. In addition, it is necessary that the postgraduate and doctoral programs of the university must lead the way towards higher quality. These programs are expected to create professionals with the highest levels of sophistication whose services are needed in many areas, including academic pursuits. These programs, we expect, should create the teaching faculty of tomorrow. I believe 
that the postgraduate and doctoral programs in Goa University need to follow a two-pronged approach if they are to serve the required purpose. Firstly, there should be efficient use of resources while pursuing excellence in teaching. And secondly, there should be vigorous research to complement training. A culture of vigorous research is necessary for achieving excellence in training. The insights gained through quality research are bound to get translated into excellence in teaching and research broadens the horizon of both the teacher and the student. The efficient use of resources is the hallmark of any system that pursues excellence. A system in which everyone tries to go beyond pulling one's weight is more likely to achieve excellence. Excellence for me is not a destination, but should be a continuous journey. However, when efforts are not made to cross the desired threshold levels of performance, there is a drag on the system and the result is decay and a downward slide. This must be avoided at all costs in the field of higher education. Friends, I have confidence in Goa University. I sincerely hope that with the commissioning of new facilities on this campus and with the faculty dedicating itself to rejuvenation, higher levels of quality in teaching and research will be achieved and sustained at the university. This is a necessity because progress of our economy is linked to the quality of our higher education and to research competence. I therefore expect that the teaching faculty, both in the colleges and at the university, will rededicate themselves to this important task which is directly linked to nation building. Dear graduates, for reasons linked to the current economic policy of our country and to its demographic profile, you enter a world of new and unique opportunities. I urge you to grab the moment. As you do so, I call upon you to keep in sight the wider panorama of life, most importantly, your roots and your values. As you take on the challenges that the world poses before you, keep in view your family and its contribution to turn you into a respected citizen of the country and the world. Let your roots be a source of strength to your ambitions and your actions. Let the roots be the anchor that will help you to face the inevitable chaos of a globalized world. Let your values guide you to pick the challenges that the world offers. Our present demographic profile may well make India a young country, yet India is a country with a long history of not only generating ideas, but also absorbing foreign ideas. As a citizen of the largest democracy on the earth, you inherit the ideals of peaceful living in a marvelously heterogeneous environment. The values associated with this peaceful coexistence are an asset in a globalized world. Preserve those values as you shape the world. I wish you all the best. Friends, before I conclude, I would like to say that as Chancellor of Goa University, it is my concern that the university should go grow at a fast pace in accordance with emerging national and international trends in education. It is my firm belief that Goa University has the wherewithal to grow as a center of excellence in higher education. However, for that, we all have to make determined efforts. It is my sincere hope that the people of Goa, and particularly those concerned with higher education, will make determined and visionary efforts to take Goa University to newer heights of academic excellence at par with global standards. I would like to finally conclude by repeating what I said some time back, that in so far as Goa is concerned, it is my firm belief and conviction that Goa can and should become a major educational hub of our country 
provided we take the right steps, have proper determination, and rise above narrow political and parochial considerations. I, for one, would like to see Goa as the Boston of India. Jai Hind, thank you. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to request you to kindly dissolve this convocation. I hereby declare that the 25th annual convocation of Goa University is now dissolved.